One of the things I prepared for my Getting Started Challenge has been my basic tool kit. When I first made it, I just tossed my tools in, but I have made it a little bit fancier now. I have put everything in using magnets um, or pockets to keep it all nice and organized, and I just love being able to grab this kit when I'm going off to stamp with others, or if I'm going traveling, um, I've got all my real essential tools right in this one kit. Let me show you how to make your own basic tool kit. To make this kit, come on over to BevAdams.com and print out the directions. In that directions will be this placement guide and if you print this full size you can cut this down and it'll be just perfect for using to uh, as a placement guide. And I'll also have a PDF with the case insert. Cut the placement guide to 5 by 7 and cut the basic tool kit. This should be about seven by six and a quarter. And so this can slip right into your full size wide wood mount case. You will also need the stamp and pierce mat, a bone folder, snail adhesive, paper snips, a paper piercing tool, and then one of these two blocks. This is the D block that's specially for Paper Pumpkin. And if you don't subscribe to Paper Pumpkin, ask your demonstrator to put one of these on the next demonstrator order. Or this is the block from the Watercolor Wishes. You're going to use one of these blocks, but not both. There are a few other things that you will need for your case. I was able to find some little bitty gel pens. This gel pen is about three and three quarters inch long. Um, I got this at Staples. You can find them there occasionally. If you can't find this size pen, um, you might try just using a golf pencil. I wish that this could be our Stampin' Up! spritzer. It needs to be small enough to fit in the case. So this is just a hand sanitizer bottle that's empty. And I have put our Stampin' Mist cleaner into this for cleaning my stamps. Another thing that I have, I have this from my old Stampin' Scrub, but you could use paint edger tools that have a real similar kind of replacement pad, and I think you can get those for a few dollars at the hardware store. Another specialty item that you're going to get from the hardware store is this Gorilla Super Glue Gel. This stuff is wonderful. The next thing we want to do is glue your magnets right to this case insert. Speaking of magnets, you want to get the really strong, thin magnets. I have found these at my local craft stores, but they're hard, hard, hard to find. And so you can order these online from K&J Magnetics. I'll have the link for you on my website. The magnets are actually pretty cheap. Um, shipping is a little more expensive. I went ahead and bought 50 of them because you can use these for all kinds of craft projects. Um, and they're nice and small and I said nice and thin. You see how tiny those are? They are really pretty tiny but they are very strong. Go ahead and you can see that I have a larger magnet on this one but go ahead and glue your small magnet to the middle of your bone folder. Also, glue the sm a small magnet to the, you want to glue it on the keeper side, this piece, close to the top. When you go to replace your tape, you don't have to replace a magnet. That stays on the keeper side. You want to glue your magnet onto the, onto the cover of your snips. Do not glue it onto the side with the hole on it, though. Glue it to the other side. Also glue a magnet to the middle of your paper piercer. I'm going to go ahead and glue the magnets on so the insert. So I'm just going to use just a dot of this gel, the super glue gel, on those three places. Before you glue these magnets on, you want to check the polarity. There's These magnets will only go together one way because of the polarity. So stick the magnet onto the one that's on your snips and then place it facing that same direction. Repeat for the snail. 
And again for the paper piercing tool. And we should probably go ahead and place the bone folder here. You want to be sure that your magnet's placed in the middle so that your bone folder will go fit. Go ahead and fold at the line for that spine and add another magnet just next to the fold on the larger end. So as that glue dries, set those aside. Meanwhile, you're going to cut down your Stampin' Pierce mat. If you cut it down to four and a half by five and three quarters, so it will still be large enough for stamping on, or piercing for that matter. It's going to be hard to see the window sheets. You're going to crease this four by nine and three quarters at one and a half. one and a half and two six and a half and seven then you're going to put tear and tape on the ends and on the first crease from each end tear off those ends. Don't you just love the tear and tape? It is so strong. It does hold this firmly to the case. Slide up that first crease to the edge, the very edge of the case at the bottom. Fold this end around and butt it up against the other end. And this will make a pocket that is perfect for sliding your mat into. Then you want to take your 1x4 and put one piece of tear and tape about an inch from one end. Slide it under the hook and loop it around. You're going to put this in here. You want to be able to pull it off your case toward the spine. And so put a couple of pieces of tear and tape on this back side. I so wish that the Stampin' Up! Spritzer would fit in here. I couldn't figure out how to make it fit. So if you can figure out a way to make it fit, that would be even better. You want to have this as flat as you can make it with that hook facing down. And press that in. Do the same thing with the other one by four. And make sure that it fits your pen or your golf pencil. And again, you want to have this so it slides out toward the spine. And you can put this right on top of the loop for your spritzer. So, and so you can just barely fit in those three items. This is kind of loose, so this is where I tuck that, that paint edger pad or your pad from your old Stampin' Scrub. Go ahead and slip this into your case. So then your bone folder fits right on the spine. One of my tools that I always love having is an alligator clip. So if I'm going to tie a bow or a knot, I just do the first part of the knot, slip this over the ribbon or the baker's twine, and I don't have to hold it anymore. So I love having that. And you can stick that, since it's metal, it stays on the magnet by itself. Now you can slip this part of the template in. I'm also going to slip some grid paper into that case. I have cut down one sheet of grid paper to be 5 by 7 and I want to be sure and have at least one side 
It starts with a zero, so I can use this for measuring. And I'm going to go ahead and slip that in behind that template so that it's showing here. I, can, I don't even have to take it out of the case to do my measuring here. But I can also take some of those sheets out to stamp on if I would like. Now we're going to work on the right side. We're going to take a piece of window sheet that's two by six and a half. And you're going to score this at one half, two, four and three quarters, and five and a fourth. Just like the piece that held the mat in, we're going to put one on the end and one next to the crease. Turn it around and put one on the end and one next to this crease. Take off the backings. And you're going to set that right over with that crease right at the edge of your case. Loop that around and again these should butt up but it should fit your block. Notice that this block is a little slightly rectangular. It should be loose enough so you can grab that and slip that out easily. Another piece of window sheet that is two by four and a fourth. Scored at three fourths, one and a fourth, three, three and a half. Again, put your tear and tape on the end and next to the first crease. And on this end, and the first crease, take off the backings, and you're going to put it in not quite up against the very edge, but at the bottom, but those ends. And if you have the block for watercolor wishes, that should slide right in. Again, you're not going to use both. You can use either. And so that's why I've made the case this size. You should be able to put your piercing tool there. Slip your scissors back into the case and stick that there. Put your, um, your snail adhesive. Now you'll, you will have to move your tools to put your blocks in and out. So if you're using this the D size block, you're going to cut down your dimensionals to fit in here. These are about one and a half by two and a half inches and so you have quite a few dimensions. I also pulled off a strip of glue dots. I looped them around to be about I don't know, I actually I think I put it around a couple of fingers and looped it around and then flattened that loop. And so those can tuck in here. You may also want to tuck in a few uh, wipes. And especially if you don't have, can't find the scrub, you can use this for cleaning your hands or your stamps. Add some sticky notes on top of here. You're going to not trust the sticky notes adhesive, but you're going to add some tear and tape onto the back of this so that they will stay on the plastic for sponging or for just writing notes, um, maybe measurements. Another tool that I'd like you to add is a microfiber cleaning cloth or you can cut this down to be smaller. I clean my block and my stamps just about every time I put them in. And now you're ready for just about any stampin' event. You have your tools ready to go. So if you would like to make your own basic toolkit, come on over to Bev Adams and I'll have all the supplies if you need. If you don't already have a demonstrator, I'd love to be yours. Thank you for stopping by. Talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.